blues makes me happy.
me tell you about the cherry trees Every April in our town They put on the most outrageous clothes And they sing and dance around Hardly anybody sings or dances Hardly anybody dances or sings In this town that I call my own Have to hand it to the cherry trees And they seem to be saying To me anyway Well we've traveled all around the sun one whole year well done everyone well, well Cherry blossoms in the air, cherry blossoms on the street, cherry blossoms in your hair, and a blossom at your feet. You know, we traveled all around the sun, you know, it's taken us one whole year. Well done, everyone. Well done. On behalf of me and the cherry trees, well done. You know me, sometimes I think I'm getting old Not as young as I used to be So it means even more to me See the dance of the cherry trees And they seem to be saying Is it only to me? Traveled all around the sun And it's taken us one whole year Well done everyone, well We traveled all around the sun and it's taken us one whole year Well done everyone Well done On behalf of me And the cherry trees Well Well done everyone
I can see clearly now the rain is gone. I can see all obstacles in my way. Gone on the dark cloud that had me blind. It's gonna be a bright, bright, sunshiny day. It's gonna be a bright, bright, sunshiny day. I think I can make it now, the pain is gone All of the bad feelings have disappeared Here is the rainbow I've been praying for It's gonna be a bright, bright, and shiny day Look straight ahead, there's nothing but blue sky. Oh. I can see clearly now. I can see all obstacles in my way Gone on the dark clouds that had me It's gonna be a bright, 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 sunshiny day It's gonna be a bright, 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 sunshiny day One more time Yeah, 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 it's gonna be a bright Journey of the night 
night begins when all the shades are gone. A garland gay we bring you here, and at your door we stand. It is a sprout well budded out, the work of a lady. When I was a girl each week Sunday we would go to church Pay attention to the priest He would read the holy word And consecrate the holy bread Everyone would kneel and bow Today the only difference is Everything is holy now Everything, everything Everything is holy now When I was in Sunday school We would learn about the time Moses split the sea in two Jesus made the water wine I remember feeling sad Miracles don't happen still But now I can't keep track Cause everything's a miracle Everything, everything Everything's a miracle Wine from water is not so small an even better magic trick is that anything is here at all. So the challenging thing becomes not to look for miracles, but finding where there isn't one. When holy water was rare at best, it barely wet my fingertips. Now I have to hold my breath Like I'm swimming in a sea of it It used to be a world half there Heaven second rate hand-me-downs But I walk it with a reverent air Cause everything is holy now Everything, everything, everything is holy now Questioning child's face Say it's not a testament That'd be very hard to say And see Another new morning come Say it's not a sacrament I tell you that it can't be done This morning outside I stood a little red-winged bird Shining like a burning bush Singing like a scripture verse It made me want to bow my head I remember when church let out How things have changed since then Cause everything is holy now Everything, everything 
everything is holy now Yeah, it used to be a world half fair Heaven second rate hand me down but I walk it with a reverent air Cause everything is holy now Everything, everything, everything is holy now And welcome to Virtual Worship with the Unitarian Universalist Church of Silver Spring. I'm Carolyn Savadkin, today's worship associate, and my pronouns are she, her, and hers. As the natural world around us blossoms into spring, it's good to be together to celebrate and remember in stories old and new how the power of life and love are stronger than death and hate. Thank you for spending some of your Easter morning together with us. Whether this is your first time joining for virtual worship or your 51st, I'm so glad you were here. Mary Beth Lerner is our welcoming captain and will be glad to answer your questions in the chat. Mary Beth will also be available during virtual coffee hour after the service. If you're watching live, you can log into Google to participate in the chat in real time. This is a big part of how we connect with one another during these services. Comments won't be available for later playback, but during the service they are very public. So please keep that in mind. Also, the live chat has some safety features to prevent disruptive comments, so you won't be able to post special characters or complete web addresses. American Sign Language Interpretation is available in a separate Zoom room for those who are deaf or hard of hearing. If you need help finding that link, please ask in the chat or email vtechsupport at uucss to get the link. In a few minutes, everyone will be invited to light our flaming chalices so now is a good time to get a chalice, a candle, or even a flashlight so you can join in kindling the flame of community. But first, let's take a moment to say thank you to all those who made today's service possible. 
Please join me in the words on your screen as we light our chalices and reaffirm our congregational commitment. May this light warm our hearts with love and caring and guide us in the ways of truth. As we gather here for worship, we pledge ourselves to the endless search for truth, to the right of each to believe as mind, heart, and conscience dictate, to accept the responsibilities this, this freedom commands and to implement our belief in the essential worth and dignity of every human being. May it be so. Now let's join in singing. The words will appear on your screen. Spirit of life, you have held us together through so much death, so much pain, so much sorrow this year, but even after the longest nights, joy comes in the morning. As the days grow warmer and longer, as leaves appear on the trees and green shoots come into flower, we celebrate the power of life and love over death and hate. Hallelujah. Come, let us worship together. Happy Easter, everyone. This morning, some UUCSS families, friends, and members of our community are going to help us learn about Easter. We're going to learn about some of Easter's oldest traditions and symbols and about one of the Christian Easter stories. Easter, 
a story adapted by Reverend Kristen Grassel Schmidt and told by the community at UUCSS. The Rabbit is story about many ancient stories and traditions about Easter. Long ago, around this same time of year, pagans in what is now Germany celebrated a holiday to honor Oster, the goddess of fertility, whose symbol was a bunny rabbit. The Easter egg. Ah, yes. He's in there to remind us about the Easter story about him. It picks up about 30 years after Jesus was born. After he had grown up and become a carpenter, Jesus' people, the Jewish people, had been being picked on by bullies for a long time. They had been picked on by the Romans, who thought they were better than everyone else, and who treated everyone else like things instead of people. Jesus had begun traveling far and wide with 12 friends he picked up along the way. And on their travels, he taught and preached about love. Even though the Romans thought they were better than everyone else, Jesus taught that God loves everyone, that God works to bring the bullies down and lift the bullied up. People liked what Jesus was telling them. It made them feel like their lives weren't hopeless anymore. But unfortunately, the bullies heard about what Jesus was doing, and they didn't like it. Eventually, the bullies got so upset with Jesus that they killed him. They nailed his body to a cross, and he died along two other people of the state decided to kill. He died on Friday and was placed in a tomb, and everyone thought that's where his, the story would end. But that wasn't the end at all. When Sunday dawned, Jesus' mother and some other woman went to the tomb to prepare his body to be buried. As they walked to the tomb, they asked each other, who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb so that we can go inside? But when they got there, they saw that the stone, which was very heavy and large, had already been rolled away. So they went inside, and what do you think they found? That the way the story goes is that they found nothing. Jesus' body was nowhere to be found. They were shocked, but soon they saw a young man dressed in a white robe nearby. And the man said to them, do not be afraid. You're looking for Jesus who died, but he has risen from the dead. He isn't here. Go and tell his friends that Jesus has gone to Galilee. The woman didn't know what to believe as they left the tomb and went to tell the others what they had seen and heard. People have been telling this story for thousands of years. And just like the woman at the end of the story, we hear it today and many of us aren't sure what to believe either. Easter is the holiday when we celebrate a promise. We celebrate a promise which is written not just in sacred books, but in every springtime leaf. And it's written perhaps most beautifully in the testimony of butterflies who enter their cocoons only to emerge transformed, only to be resurrected from their still and slumber into glorious butterflies. What once was a caterpillar dissolves completely, only to be rebuilt inside its cocoon. What once could only crawl emerges to fly. As Eric Walker Wickstrom writes, the question is not whether we believe in resurrection, but whether we have known it known it in our own lived experience, seen it in the lives of others, and felt it in the world around us. Persephone returns to the world of light. Osiris is resurrected by the power of the love of his wife, Isis. And the phoenix is born anew from its own ashes. Jesus leaves behind the tomb. 
snow and ice melts, giving way to new life. The promise of our shared faith is the promise of the seasons and these stories. Winter is not perpetual. The wheel will keep on turning. The tomb is not the end. We affirm the promise of rebirth, of resurrection, of life's ultimate victory over death, of hope's triumph over hopelessness. Not just as some abstract concept, but as the miraculous reality of our lives. And this is what we celebrate today. I invite you now to take a moment for centering. Take a deep breath and let it out. Notice your breathing. Notice how your body feels. If your hands are clenched, I invite you to relax them. If your shoulders are tense, I invite you to roll them forward and then roll them back. Sit however is most comfortable for you and feel yourself held by gravity and the earth. Feel yourself held in the love of family and friends, held in the support and care of this community. It's hard to believe we're celebrating our second Easter virtually. A lot has happened in the last year. We have lost so much, so many. We've learned a lot. We have a new sense, many of us, of what is important and what we feel inspired or called to do in this new season. In a moment, all worshiping with us live will be invited to type their joys and sorrows into the chat box during the music. Please keep in mind that everything you share during the live broadcast is public. If you're having a hard time and you'd like some extra support, please send an email to layministers at uucss.org and either they or I will be in touch with you. But you don't have to be a lay minister to practice the ministry of love and care for others. So feel free to make a note of anyone you'd like to send some support this week. And if you're watching this recording later, I invite you to hold yourself and all of your joys and sorrows tenderly and to hold in loving kindness all those in your life and in the world who are suffering and who are in need and who need justice. Let us now open our hearts to the joys and sorrows this gathered community has to share.
spirit of life. On this joyful Easter morning with springtime hallelujahs resounding as loud in our hearts as on our lips, we give thanks. We give thanks for the beauty of nature, for the earth's many gifts. We give thanks for holidays and holy days and the chance to celebrate even if it still feels really different this year. We give thanks for the love and challenge of community, for the ways our relationships with others support and stretch us, and for the times we thought we'd reached the end only to find the beginning of something new. It has been said that the tombstone was moved not to let Jesus out, but to let the disciples in. Lead us then into life's empty pastures that new seeds of hope and faith might find fertile ground and take root in us. As the earth will be warmed by the sun, as the rivers will overflow from spring rains, as animals will grow fat from the bounty of field and forest, nourish those seeds within us all, that the new life they hold might bud and blossom and grow within and far beyond us. Reassure us here today that the power of life and love is greater than death and hate, as we reaffirm our faith that we are all siblings in spirit, all meant for love beyond belief. With thanks, hope, and commitment, empowered as love's own hands and feet in this world, we make our prayer with gratitude. These and all things we pray for love's sake. Amen. interracial, interdenominational church in the United States, wrote a famous sermon about Easter called The Glad Surprise. In it, he talks about the heart of Easter as that feeling of glad surprise. He gives examples like the joy of discovering more money in your bank account than you thought you had, or discovering that we don't have our key with us but someone has left the door unlocked for us just in case, or receiving a clean bill of health after thinking we might receive a serious diagnosis. But the glad surprise goes even deeper than this. He writes that the glad surprise has to do with the very ground and foundation of hope about the nature of life itself. 
the coming end of winter and the beginning of spring, the end of a long tunnel of struggle and suffering. And here's the quote that is our reading today. This is what Easter means in the experience of the race. This is the resurrection. It is the announcement that life cannot ultimately be conquered by death, that there is no road that is at last swallowed up in an ultimate darkness, that there is strength added when the labors increase, that multiplied peace matches multiplied trials, that life is bottomed by the glad surprise. Here ends our reading. This time of year, two years ago, I remember feeling my heart sink <clears throat> as I watched the Notre Dame Cathedral burn and its spire fall. That great 850-year-old landmark, which thousands of stone workers and glass blowers, metal workers and wood carvers had crafted for over two centuries, that great site of so many musical and artistic and religious developments, it had been burning already for hours. Crowds had lined the streets surrounding the safety perimeter, singing hymns, pleading with the powers that be for the church to survive. And when the spire fell, many of us assumed the church was gone forever. But a few hours later, a new picture emerged, blurry around the edges, but clear enough to make out that it was the inside of the nave, the large stone worship space inside the cathedral. It was obvious some damage had been done, but the nave was still standing and the altar was somehow unscathed. Some called it a miracle, but however the main body of Notre Dame managed to survive the inferno, it was what Reverend Thurmond would call a glad surprise. We can only imagine the glad surprise of the women in our Easter story this morning. They rise very early, the text says it was still dark outside, and they go expecting to prepare Jesus' body for burial, to anoint it with good smelling herbs and oil so his friends and loved ones could gather around his body comfortably to offer their last goodbyes. They go expecting to encounter death, but instead they find an empty tomb and a stranger with unbelievable news that Jesus isn't dead anymore. They don't know what to believe. This is so out far outside any experience they've ever had before. But then the story says that Jesus appears to each of them, urging them to travel far and wide, teaching the message of his ministry, that the true path of salvation lies not in military might and occupying force, but in work towards justice and mercy and compassion, and the understanding that every single person is beloved by God. What a blessing that we have this holiday set aside to remember again and again the glad surprises that buoy days and months and even years that feel more like Good Fridays than they do like Easter's. This is the day we celebrate that though they are here, Though our journey takes us through them, pain and hate and death don't have the final word. This is the day we celebrate that something holy, something we couldn't have even imagined before, can come out of even the worst experiences. Many of the symbols of Easter testify to this idea. After a long, long winter when crops are just beginning to grow again and game is still scarce, it's the rabbits that first begin to appear in great numbers, probably because they will eat just about anything that grows. They are symbols of fertility and the abundance of spring. And then there's the butterfly. It begins life as a caterpillar, then goes into its cocoon, and later emerges as a beautiful butterfly. It's a classic symbol of transformation, of new life, of losing ourselves as we once were so we can find ourselves as we might be. 
Another one of the most powerful symbols of resurrection for me is something called the Sahara Resurrection Plant. This plant can survive months, even years of dehydration, rolling through the desert wherever the wind blows it. It looks dead, way past dead actually, but when it does finally roll into some water, the plant transforms from a brown, withered up, tumbleweed looking thing to a vibrant green plant. The resurrection plant seems a fitting Easter symbol, especially this year. Some among us have received vaccines and are able to begin doing things we haven't been able to do for over a year. Whether it's having lunch outside with a friend or hugging a loved one after a year apart or going back for that first haircut, it might feel like a long drink of water after a long time in the desert. But there are so many among us who have not yet received their vaccine or who are children or teenagers who won't be able to receive vaccines for quite some time or who for medical reasons will never be able to receive the vaccine. And it's hard to see so many other people acting like life is now back to normal, just like it's hard to see so many others enjoying life if we're still grieving beloveds who have died. However it happens, and this year it's happening for a lot of us, it's hard to feel left out of the fullness of life enjoyed by others. And it's hard to preach resurrection in a year when we've seen so much death, in an era when so much greed and injustice and hunger for power has been revealed in this country. <clears throat> From climate change to white supremacy to new threats to our democracy, the problems we face today feel huge and sometimes they feel like they would be impossible to change. And yet, I was reminded of another harmful human-made reality that for a very long time seemed impossible to change. To say that the institution of slavery was tied up in economic and political systems would be an understatement. Slavery was the foundation of the economies that created the American colonies, and it became an American institution when it was written into our Constitution. On top of that, political and religious systems in this country worked together for centuries to reinforce society's acceptance of it. Despite all that was against them, in the face of a political, economic, religious, and social system, founded on slavery. At first a few and then many more believed the unbelievable. They believed that slavery could and would be abolished. I think about the faith of a people whose grandparents and parents were born into bondage, who had children taken from their arms and sold, never to be seen or heard from again. I think about the people who experienced those unspeakable things and who somehow had hearts and imaginations big enough to believe that the evil of slavery would end. Abolition did not come quickly. It did not come easily and it did not come from on high. But against all odds, it did come. And it happened because people not only hoped it would, they believed it could. Changing our voting rights protections and strengthening our public health programs and paying our teachers better may seem like problems too big and complicated to solve in today's world, but it's only if we believe something is possible that it becomes worthwhile to commit ourselves to it, to take risks for it. If love and justice could find a way through all of the barriers to abolition, then perhaps that same power can move our hearts, our hands, our feet to usher in liberation for us today. The wounds and the scars of the past will never be erased. But if Easter has anything to teach us, it is that life and love and possibility 
are more powerful even than death. When we've gone in expecting only the worst to have the opposite happen, <clears throat> when we are convinced there is no hope and suddenly it dawns, filling the empty tombs of our hearts, not with the finality of death, but with the possibility of new life. When what seems impossible somehow becomes possible. That is the glad surprise. That is the power of resurrection. That is Easter. Hallelujah. One Sunday a month, UUCSS holds a special collection for a community partner. This month, our community partner is Nourish Now. Nourish Now is a nonprofit food bank in Rockville that serves people from all over Montgomery County. Let's take a look at a video about Nourish Now and how our gifts will help them serve their important mission in our community. I'm Catherine Buckler, and I'm here to tell you about April's community partner, Nourish Now. Nourish Now is a local nonprofit that provides food to people in need in Montgomery County. They were originally founded on the model of recovering donations of fresh, healthy food that might otherwise have gone to waste from grocers, farms, restaurants, caterers, and other commercial food distributors. As you can imagine, the pandemic restrictions on these businesses choked off this vital source of donated food. They now depend on funding from individuals, foundations, governments, and churches like ours to raise money to purchase food. Undaunted by the pandemic, Nourish Now has pivoted their operations to find creative ways to meet the growing need for food in the county. They created the Multicultural Mobile Food Assistance Program. With the help of the on-the-go capabilities of area food truck operators, they've been able to distribute healthy food to people at 17 sites in communities where there's poor access to grocery stores and transportation. Nourish Now has reached more than 40,000 households, including 70,000 children and 2,000 seniors, with nearly 4 million meals. Won't you join me and my family as we share our generous gifts with Nourish Now as they help fight hunger in Montgomery County? Thank you. There is so much in this life we receive which we do nothing to earn. The beauty of nature, the inspiration of music and art, our very lives themselves. All of these things are gifts we receive. The Unitarian Universalist Church of Silver Spring is also a gift. They created this community not only for themselves, but for all of us who receive its gifts of inspiration and learning, music and service today. And now it's our turn to give what we can to support this congregation and our community partners so that others can enjoy the gifts we have received in abundance. Sunday morning offerings are part of what makes our ministries, programs, and mission possible. But most importantly, making an offering will allow you to practice generosity, to contribute to a community that can do more together than any of us can do alone. There are three ways you can make your financial gift to the congregation. The first is by downloading the Give Plus mobile app from Vanco to set up an account. The second way to give is by using your phone to text a message to 833-880-1363. And if the app or te texting just don't work for you, the third way is by mailing a check directly to the church. All of the information you need for all of these three methods is on your screen now <clears throat> and will peel or appear again toward the end of today's service. I hope you will join me in making an offering with gratitude for all life's gifts and for all the UUCSS means to you. The offering is now given and received with joy.
May the gifts we have given fuel the flame of our commitment, empower us to serve out our mission, and give the life we share the shape of truth, love, and justice. Good morning. Thank you for being here today. My name is Emily Harris, and I am a member of the Board of Trustees at the Unitarian Universalist Church of Silver Spring. My pronouns are she, her, hers. Our church is not only the organization that puts together these services. We are a vibrant community of volunteers and staff, a member of the Unitarian Universalist Association, and a part of the global UU denomination. Visitors are especially welcome to our virtual coffee hour after the service to learn more about us. Today we have three announcements. Please mark your calendars for our annual fellowship dinner on Saturday, May 15th. For the first time ever, we are going virtual, and we are excited to welcome our very own Ben Johnson for a stand-up comedy routine. Registration will run from April 8th to April 23rd, so be on the lookout for the link to sign up. We are looking forward to being together as a community. And now, Reverend Kristen will announce the winner of our first annual budget drive incentive. So many of you have rolled up your sleeves and made pledges already for the 2021-2022 church year. Thank you to everyone who has made their financial commitment to support this congregation, our programs, and everything that we do together. People make a pledge and share their gifts with UUCSS because of what this community means to them, but we thought it would be fun to include some pledge incentives this year. And the first of those was being entered into a raffle to win lunch with me. And everyone who got their pledge in by the end of the day, last Sunday, March 28th, made the cut. So without further ado, let's find out who the winners are. G1 Kim and Scott Sleek. And David Miley and Donavy Smith. Our final announcement is from our Annual Budget Drive Committee co-chair, Margot Kelly. Hi, I'm Margot Kelly, one of the Annual Budget Drive co-chairs this year, along with Jamie Jorgensen and Teresa Meeks. As of this past Tuesday, we have 74 pledges totaling $286,122 toward our goal of $442,851. This is 65% towards our goal. Thanks to everyone who has pledged so far. We are doing fantastic. We still have a couple great incentives for this year's ABD. First, we have secured a match to any increased pledge this year. For example, if you increased your pledge from $2,500 to $3,000, this amount will be matched by another $500 by some generous UUCSS members. Second, become a sustaining donor. These are members who sign up to pledge through automatic withdrawal, if you, uh, through monthly automatic withdrawal. If you become a sustaining donor by Sunday, April 11th, you will be entered into a raffle to win the chance to work with Michael Holmes to choose music for a worship service in May. The winner will be announced in worship on Sunday, April 18th. If you haven't pledged yet, Go to the UUCSS website for the ABD menu and find the pledge link. Also a reminder, if you are using the Banco Give Plus app for your pledge payment, please be sure to select the 21-22 budget year. Let's continue to roll up our sleeves to make this a successful ABD. We give thanks for all of the activities that enrich and enliven our congregational life.
please join me in the words for extinguishing the chalice. Carry the flame of peace and love until we meet again. May our faith in the power of life and love flower and bloom anew within us. May we be blessed with many glad surprises. And may this gladness move us to be love's hands and feet in the world. Happy Easter. Our worship has ended and now our service begins. <laughs>